Now to Kepler's third law. Wait, what about the first two? You may remember Kepler has three laws of planetary motion. Uh, law number one is that all orbits are ellipses with the sun at one foci. His second law says that it will take an equal amount of time to pass through one part of the orbit as it does the other part. Basically, you're going to be moving faster as you're closer to the center of mass, the star that you're orbiting. And then now on to Kepler's third law, which relates the periods and radii of circular orbits of different objects orbiting the same central body. Kepler's third law has a proof, which is the period of a circular orbit. Uh, that's the equation that we just did, in case you forgot it. Back in 10.2, you may want to revisit that. We'll do it again. In the 1500s, Johannes Kepler was a German monk who studied the orbits of the planets and was one of the first people to apply the principles of algebra and geometry to planetary motion. All right, so in the 1500s, you had a lot of people starting to not notice the night sky, because everybody noticed the night sky, uh, but really start applying some of the scientific principles to the sky. Johannes Kepler wasn't the guy doing this. Johannes Kepler uh, made sense of data, but he wasn't the guy collecting the data. As right? we've done in experiments, we collect data and then we have to analyze it, figuring out what is the relationship between these two. So Johannes Kepler wasn't the data collector, he was the analyzer. The data collector is the extremely interesting part of this story. The data collector's name was Tycho Brahe, who was such a good astronomer, uh, you ha he was given an island where he could do nothing but practice astronomy. Look up in the night sky and uh, chart stars' positions. The data, stars and planets. Uh, positions. The data was so good that it's still used today, and this we're talking 700 years ago. Tycho Brahe is not interesting because of that, though. He's interesting because of the nose that he lost in a duel, or uh, being abandoned basically by his parents, or maybe it's going out socializing with potential alcoholic beverages and not going to the bathroom when he should and dying of a burst bladder after getting an infection. Or maybe it's the mystery of Johannes Kepler possibly killing him instead of that in order to access his data so he could formulate his own model of the solar system. Interesting stuff. Tycho Brahe is his name. Go look it up. Do yourself a favor. Back to Johannes Kepler. His three laws apply to any tiny object orbiting a much larger object, not just the planets orbiting the sun. And what his third law says is that t squared over r cubed is the same for all objects in circular orbits around the same central body. Or put in a different way, t squared is proportional to r cubed. Same thing. Remember t is the orbital period and r is the orbital radius of the object. So all the planets and everything else orbiting the sun have t's and r's, so that ratio is the same for all of them. Likewise, the moon and all satellites, like man-made satellites, orbiting the earth have t's and r's, such that the ratio t squared r cubed is the same for all of them, but these objects are not the same ratio as objects orbiting the sun just relative to each other, because if you change r, then obviously the period is going to change. Check out this table. It shows the planet's orbital radius in meters and orbital period in seconds. Looking at each of these, we have the period and we have the radius for each planet. The ratio of the period squared to r cubed is 2.98 for Mercury, 2.96 to Venus, 2.97. Not 2.97, 2.98 times 10 to the negative 19th, an incredibly small number. So small that there's going to be some fluctuations expected in this data, some measurement error. Maybe Jupiter is has a period of 3.740001. 
Starting with the orbital period equation, we can uh, prove Kepler's third law by squaring both sides of this equation. Remember, this was the equation from the previous uh, slides. If we square both sides, we get t squared on this side. On the right side, we get 4 pi squared times r cubed over gm. Or here it is, t squared is proportional to r cubed. If you want the ratio, then you would just divide r cubed from each side. This means the ratio depends only on the object that is at the center of the orbit. That, that center of, that, that giant mass, sorry. So all objects orbiting the same central body have the same ratio, Kepler's third law. Also, if we have the data of t's and r's of several objects orbiting the same central body, we can linearize the data by plotting t squared on the vertical and r cubed on the horizontal. We've done this a bunch with all of our linearization practices. If you have not yet grasped linearization at this point in the year, do it. Go back to a previous section. Perhaps I'll put this on the website so you can have it again. The slope of that line is 4 pi squared over gm because whenever you have a fraction, you can get you can treat that like a slope to figure out what is your y value and x value. 